that I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Jesus said unto him, Peter, verily or truly I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Peter said unto him, though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. Amen. They all denied him in a sense. Amen. You may be seated in your homes. Amen. The word of, the word of Almighty God. Amen. We're blessed today and honored. To Thank you for, again, tuning in and sharing in the Amen. message. We'll continue to praise him and, and Reverend Colin Lett, musician leaders in a hymn of him, congregational message, and as he leads and sings. And if you're aware, you may, for jubilation, sing along with him. Worship is not about entertaining. Yeah. Worship uh, entertain you, but worship is for you to join in and right. tell God thank you. Amen. Amen. Oh, 
is Jesus. This is my story. All about the Savior. This is my song. The mighty one. Praising my Savior all the day long. Hallelujah. This is my song. Amen. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. Oh, this is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Yes, Lord. Yeah, oh, yeah. Everyone sing that chorus again. This is my story. This is my song. Sing it in your home. Praising my Savior all day long. Yes. All this is my story. This is my song. Amen. Blessed Assurance, that's one of the great hymns of, 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 of modern Christianity. Listen, it was written by a blind lady. All right. A lady named Fanny Crosby. Mm -hmm. Blind. And she was able to tell somebody those words. Oh, yeah. she had great spiritual vision, but physically blind. This is my story. You ought to have a story today. Amen. God's been good to you. Yeah. She could see God through her spiritual vision. Though her eyes were dull, God is good this morning. Yeah. We welcome you to the house of praise, worship. Uh, we're still meeting in our blessed sanctuaries, in our Amen. home as well as in your home. But and in our hearts, yeah, mainly, yeah. thank God for another day for life. Pray He would just bless us. We are in a pandemic time, and God is trying to bring us closer together in love and sharing and doing all we can to do that. We welcome you today. Pray all is well in our families, in our homes. Keep Jesus alive. Continue to worship, continue to praise, be safe. Distancing and wearing masks is still the order of the day. Yeah. Regardless of what the government and others may say. Man. Let us practice distancing and practice masks. Uh, some may have heard us before we turn into the air that we considered on congregating back together again, but the number of cases is has started to increase in just about all the states. Amen. Even in people who've had the virus, had the vaccine, the number of cases is beginning to rise again, a different strain. So there's no time to uh, for us to think that this pandemic is over. Amen. We pray it won't be as severe as 2020, but we lost close to, in that year, 500, close to 500,000 lives, some close. But we're going to keep on leaning and depending on Jesus. Yes, yes. Leaning on him, that God will show us and guide us the way. Let us continue to worship now with our gifts, make a commitment to give and to share. Jesus has given so much, yes, so we should give and to share in our, in our tithes and our offerings. Again, share with the officers or, or mail it in to Kevin Ainwell Baptist Church, 9641 Alabama Highway 22. 
We're appreciative to you just for sharing and continue to pray for the ministry. Yes. We thank you for those that are members as well as non-members who've been engaging and praying and in sharing in the Bible studies and the and the Sunday morning worship. We have needs to be pray for the sick. Yeah. Let us call them on the telephone, the members, and encourage them and visit uh, in a safe and friendly manner and, and as God to continue to uplift us in a mighty way. Bless us in a mighty way. Well, that's uh, Deacon McNeil to share prayer for the sick and as Deacon Bryant to pray for the church or Sister Bryant if he's not available. And our Father in heaven, it is once again, oh God, to have allowed us to be able to come together. The Heavenly Father, we come this come leaning and depending on thee and thee alone. We rely on understanding nothing we could do or know why we could go but die. So God, as we come this morning, we ask you to continue your way to pain or push it down around upon those who are sick on a bed of affliction, those who have been stumbling and falling by the wayside, Heavenly Father, and reaching for, reaching out to thee, Heavenly Father, to just heal their bodies and, Heavenly Father, ease their scotching fever, cool their scotching fever, and ease their aching pain, and Heavenly Father, just hold their hand and walk with them day by day and talk to them. Lead them, teach them, and guide them from one good degree to the nerd, Heavenly Father, and strengthen them day by day as they journey to and fro, Heavenly Father. Sometimes realizing and understanding that they look like they can't make it from one end of the day to the other. But, oh God, we know that you hold the whole round world in the palm of your hand, Heavenly Father. Continue to bless them, continue to keep them, keep your strong arm protection around us, all in particular from all three arm and dangers. Now, Lord Jesus, we rely. And understand one day we all gonna have to come down from this walk of life, Heavenly Father, steady war no more. Don't know where how I can relax. His body was just walk with us and talk with us and meet us in that last state. Teach us and guide us from one good future. Jesus will forever pray. Amen. Amen. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. Deacon Bryant or Sister Bryant. Share with us in prayer. Thank you, Father, for our light now. I have early rise this morning. Thank you, Father, for having just a portion of our help. We Father, to go with us and stand by. Realize, Father, that we are weak, but thou art strong. Ask you to go with us and well come in a special way. Let Amen. Let in a special way. It is your Holy Spirit. our pastor and his family. It is Holy Word. And by realize, Father, we are weak, but you are very strong. We can have no one else to depend on but you, Jesus. And I was leaning and depending on you, Father. I'm still leaning and depending on you. Let I am well church in a special way. Amen. It's continue to keep the faith. If it is your hope, we can't make it, Father, without you. These are many blessings we ask in Son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh, God, we thank you for the gifts. We thank you. For the contributing heart, the spirit that 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 they share. Bless the church. May it be give it wisdom and strength to use it appropriately. In your mighty name, bless the homes that gave and those that had a desire. In your precious name, we pray. Amen. 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 We thank you for those that are sharing. Uh, let us continue to remember we in worship and please avoid any background noise and of any type of noise because everyone can hear it and it infringes upon their ability to hear. So let us worship and praise and quiet quietude, which is uh, during the worship. We thank you so much we're going to continue now what I call silent worship or 
prayer for meditation. You won't have to be singing, but you just pray where you are. Ask God to arrest your spirit in into your closet and have a little talk with the master as the music serenades us in spiritual background. Ask God to just bless you. Pray for others, not just yourself. Pray for the worship that it will be meaningful to you. Don't forget to pray for forgiveness of your sins, for your home, your family, for your life. Ask him for more faith, new hope. Thank him for his abundance, abundance of grace and mercy and love, his goodness, all he's done. Ask him to let every Sunday be a resurrection day for you. Every day. Pray for divine health as well as physical health. Pray for America. Pray for people everywhere on this terrestrial ball in his mighty name. Then I ask you to just pray for yours truly. God will give me the wisdom to preach his word to lead to the unsaved, the lost, the bewildered, those in despair, lack of hope, as well as to those that are full of faith and going on to be encouraged. God knows we have all have need of him. Bless now. Colin Letters wants you to com complete the silent prayers of worship and meditation. We'll lead us in the Samonic hymn and, and we'll be if the Spirit of God for the morning message. Oh, how he loves you and me. God, we thank you for another worship opportunity to praise your name. Now, Father, now we thank you for allowing us to stand in your pulpit to prophesy your word. May it add strength and meaning to all that listen and go beyond measures you said your word will never return until you void. 
Father God, now we ask you to just edify your people, strengthen them in all ways that you know how. And then, oh God, we pray above all else that you would just glorify yourself. Glorify yourself even when we don't sing, when we don't praise you. Glorify yourself. In the mighty name of Jesus, who has all power in heaven and on earth, we pray and ask it all. Amen. 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 Again this morning, God is good. We trust you all had a great week. And continue to reflect on the Almighty. Amen. We welcome again all of the members and and uh, I I think of all those that are tuned in as members, even though they have not joined our church necessarily, but and they are part of the membership. Amen. Amen. I wrote one or two of them and I told them that I was their virtual pastor. That's right. <laughs> A virtual, virtual pastor. Amen. We are glad to have them that have been entwined with us during this pandemic. And God brings good out of the bad. Or if it had not been for the pandemic, we may not have had this fellowship, this relationship. But we're going to thank God for it and ensure the best. Amen. 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 God is, God is good. We, uh, we love each of you and pray God would just bless. Those that have been tuned in until late and we read scripture this morning. <clears throat> from the Gospel of St. Matthew, the 26th chapter, and you may read it in your spiritual leisure. And we read from the 26th through the 35th verse. If you had not had the opportunity to read it, please share it again. We want to elevate from that, that word, the 28th verse. This is the word of Jesus as he was on that Thursday night, his last night on earth, alive. He was speaking to his disciples in the upper room. They had shared the Passover, and Jesus was obviously sharing, created the first time the Lord's Supper. And this 28th verse, I want to. Uh, speak from it today, if you would. And I'll read the King James Version to you. For this, Jesus speaking, is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Amen. Amen. Let us continue to worship in silence and our background, please. Thank you much. We want to think for a moment for the remission of sins of the New Testament. Uh, you know about the Old Testament or the Old Covenant, the old relationship. But Jesus said, now that I've come, it's going to be a New Testament. No more uh, killing lambs. I am the lamb. A New Testament, a new word, a new belief. My blood, a New Testament, a new covenant, new relationship. And I'm shedding my blood for many, not just for Aimwell and for you, but for the remission of sins. In other words, God hates sin. But in order for us to be reunited in him, I've come to earth to die for your sins, to pay the debt. I want you to think along with us for a few minutes in your spiritual vein uh, with the thought of the blood will never lose its power. 
the blood will never lose its power. Some may not understand that. So I thought of another thought as we deliver the message, if, if you would. And you can just think on this uh, and ask yourself, has Jesus done enough for you? Has he done enough for you? For me, both themes are appropriate. For I realize that the blood that Jesus shed will never lose its power. And I can quickly, quickly answer and tell you this morning that he has done enough for me. Amen. Betrayal and Jesus had the flesh just like you and I, prone to people, withdrawing, and he was sitting around the table with his, the closest people he knew on earth, the 12. True enough, there were no ladies there, uh, the family of Lazarus, Martha, and Mary, other than them, but the 12 that he had chosen were there, and, and he was hurt because he began to say that they would betray him. They would betray him. It's like sitting around your family table and thinking that uh, they would betray him. Jesus was hurt. All 12, Jesus said, uh, before this night is over, that uh, all of you will betray me. Different measures, of course. You know how Peter spoke up right away Lord, I, I'll never deny you, never deny you. And Jesus, I imagine almost to an emotional period of crying, said, Peter, the cock will crow this night. And before, after you have rejected me three times. But I want to let you know that the blood will never lose its power. And betrayal is nothing new to Jesus, the only begotten Son of God, who volunteered. I remind you, Jesus volunteered to come to earth. Volunteered. He didn't come to do the miracles, though he did them to manifest himself to you. But Jesus' purpose in coming to earth was to go to Calvary and die for the remission of sin. Adam had sinned, God made him perfect. Remind you, made man perfect. Adam, Adam represents all of us. Adam didn't know what sin was. When God made man, man didn't know what sin was. Adam didn't know about sin until he had eaten of the forbidden fruit. God made man to live forever on this earth live. Adam had no sickness. Uh, Adam had no sickness uh, until he no signs like we do uh, until after the, the betrayal. The Israelites betrayed him. Even King David. <clears throat> David, the lad whom God blessed mightily killed Goliath came a great king. He was the son of Jesse and watched over his father's sheep. God gave him not such great spiritual power, physical power. You know the story of how David on the same day with his own hands protecting the sheep was able to kill a lion and a bear. God is wonderful. But yet still David sinned. He committed adultery and slew another man's another man's man in the sense of womanhood wife and then Jesus said the holy 12 all of you shall slip away from me Jesus was down and out they all betrayed him and to different measures but he talked about it in so many ways 
in our own lives, we leave something to be desired. Mm -hmm. Is that betrayal? I'll let you answer for yourself. But Jesus died, whether you betrayed him or not, he died for all of us, for the whosoever, black, white, colored, brown, Negro, whatever you want to call yourself, rich, poor. The word here, he says in the text, remission for many, we shared for many. And even though you betray me, Jesus said, I'm still going on to Calvary because of the commitment to my father and for the remission of sin. Anyhow, I don't know about you this morning, but can you say in spite of the world's betrayal problems, I'm going on in Jesus' name. I know that the blood will never lose its power. I want to let the world know that he has done enough for me. Maybe you've been betrayed. It's a, and betrayal is a painful experience. Grieving, but we must go on to Calvary. Jesus is our strength. Still, we must keep on loving, rising and falling, running this race, standing even like the ancestors in slavery in the heat of the day. Friends may leave you when you need them the most, but Calvary's cross is still there. Family may not understand. <coughs> Spouse or children may not always be appreciated, neglected, misunderstood, but I tell you, the power is in Jesus' name this morning. As long as you trust in God, you'll have the power to overcome. I'm glad Jesus said, don't they betray me. I'm going on in the house. No one is going to take my life. I'm going, I've come to give it up. I come to lay it down. I may be tortured, it'll be painful, agony, but I'm going on. What does it take for you to stop coming to church? What does it take for you to stop praising God Almighty? Jesus said, one of you, one of you, you know the story. But he quickly pronounces judgment on him. He says, woe, <clears throat> woe unto that man. Woe unto Judas. Didn't call his name. But he said to you, black American, anybody, woe unto those that don't believe that I am the Christ. Believe that I am the son of God. Believe that I am God. Woe unto you. It would be better that they were never born. Don't think that applies just to Judas. If you don't believe in Jesus, he's God, the son of God, that he died for the remission of sin. I tell you this morning in this message, woe unto you. But I'm going on because the blood would never lose his power. There's power in the blood, and I know that the blood can heal you. Pilate may wash his hands. Herod tried to kill me. Peter denied me. Thomas doubted me. But the blood will never lose its power. Has it done enough for you, America? Has it done enough for you, those there this morning? Jesus said, your sins can't stand me. Sinners can't resist me because the blood will never lose its power. You might not decide to be a Christian anymore. Church pews may become the empty. The race may fall from God, but my blood will never lose its power. The KKK, white supremacists, or any other hate group, Trump called them the down, the big boys, or the down boys, I can't remember how he phrased it, may try to burn down every black church, criticize, but my blood will never lose its power. Whether COVID comes or goes, pandemic in your life, in sickness or in whatever kind of way it manifests itself, the blood will never lose its power. Congress may cut welfare, may starve the babies, throw away the elderly, may dry up 
stock market, no more stimulus checks, but the blood will never lose its power. Nightclubs and gambling casinos will stay busy. The church may become empty, and I don't care who's in the White House, whether it's Democrat or Republican, whether they're black or white, the blood will never lose its power. If the Supreme Court never says it's all right to pray in school, it may mean the men and women of God are not on the court who would deny Jesus. Other things may replace God in your life. Your money, watch yourself. Your talent, your good looks, your spouse, you're having such a good time. You can't get over your degrees. Oh, thou shalt have no other God before me. But I heard a voice like that one of Joshua speaking in his elder years about facing death. I heard him tell the people, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. That old black hymn they used to adopt for themselves, they used to sing, somebody said, I will trust in the Lord. Not for a little while, but I will trust in the Lord till I die. Power means that can't nobody do you like Jesus. I don't care what all the great things you have about you, but I want to tell you this morning that he will, Jesus will make a way out of no way. You can wake up your ancestors. They'll tell you about it. I don't know about you this morning, but have you tried him? He's able. But you got to be saved. I know you have an education. You got a job that I gave you. Feel good about yourself. Secure in your own ways, but, but you must be born again. Must be washed in my blood the precious blood of the lamb. My blood will never lose its power. You might decide that you're not coming back to church. You're going to stay at home every Sunday morning and get you some rest. You're going to go fishing, go party hard, get tired of hearing the preach word from Lent or another minister. Pandemic, I know it's been tough. You may have been victimized to yonder's end. You may have lost a loved one, a friend. But I tell you this morning, Jesus is still alive. The blood will never lose his power. If you never sing a prayer, tell anybody about Jesus. Don't feel like knocking on doors. For the Lord, don't want to open your Bibles at home. Don't want to speak about him in your home, on your job, wherever you go and hobnog. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm glad this morning that Jesus has done enough for me. When you laid me down last night, that was enough. When you woke me up this morning, uh, that's enough. When my cup overflows in abundance, that's enough. When my enemies are all around me, he makes them my footstool, that's enough. That same Jesus told me, if you preach my word, preach my gospel, lo, I'll be with you to the ends of the world. I'll keep you safe. Well, it was his amazing grace that saved me thus far. That same Jesus soothes our wounds and dries all of our tears. That same Jesus sets our hearts on fire, eases our heavy burdens, a, a name above every name. Oh, how sweet the name of Jesus. At his name, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess. The blood may not change 
some people mind, but it's enough for me. Maybe it hasn't been enough for you, but he's all right in my life. He's been a, a way out of no way. I tell you, he's a bridge over troubled water. I'm a witness this morning that God will make a way out of no way. But one good Friday, he died enough for me. They bruised him for our iniquities, chastised him enough for our sins. He didn't have any sin, but he jumped up on Calvary's rugged cross. I don't go God to heal. They whipped him and abused him from courtroom to courtroom. That was enough for me. They spat in his face and called him everything but the son of God. Peter denied him. Thomas doubted him. Judas sold him, possessed with a cancer greed. That was enough. They nailed his hands to the cross and, and to his feet. That was enough. He hung on the cross from 12 noon to 3 o'clock in the afternoon on April the 7th, A.D. That was enough for me. He died. Yes, he did. That was enough. Stayed in the grave all night Friday. That was enough. Stayed all day Saturday enough to take the stain out of death. All night Saturday. But then the early, early resurrection Sunday morning, he got up with all power. All power. That was enough for me. What about you this morning? I'm glad one day, one Sunday, he did enough for me. Sometimes I've been up, sometime on the rough side of the mountain, but I know God will make a way out of no way. I, I've been wrong sometime. I've done wrong, but God still pulled me up by the miry clay. I've been buried in the ditch. But God still stood me up, got down in the ditch and lifted me up. One of these old days, one of these old days uh, when I've finished fighting the good fight, when I've finished my course, it'll be enough for me when I can hear him say, well done. What about you? One of these old days, uh, you'll hear him say, well done. It will be enough for you because the blood will never lose its power. We thank God for the word today. The doors of the church are open because he's done enough for you, done enough for me. The blood will never lose its power. Ask God to give you more faith, more strength, more hope. Let you not fall by the wayside. Let us receive now the invitation of him. The doors of the church are open. If you're out of Christ. Unsaved. Give us a call. 874-4585 during the week. What is our prayer? We, we want to tell you about a man named Jesus who paid for the remission of sin. And he'll make a way. Even if you're already saved and in despair, feel downtrodden, forsaken, hopefully not forgotten, want to reintroduce you to Jesus. For he says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. But he that liveth and believeth in him shall never die. I declare to you the doors of the church are open. Because he lives and made a way out of no way, has he done enough for you? Sing along with us this morning if you know the words. The blood that Jesus shed Amen. for me. Yeah, yeah.
that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. Yes, Lord. Yeah, never, never. the unsaved, the lost. Thank you for joining in with us today on this another Sabbath day. Uh, every day is a day of Sunday is a day of resurrection. God will continue to bless. Join in with us Wednesday night in Bible study if it's convenient for you and to share in the word and become a better people. Pray for one another. Practice social distancing, but still use your phone and other measures of communication to share Christian brotherhood. We need each other. We pray for each other for strength. We had thought about coming together real soon physically, but we're inclined to delay that a little bit longer now. We're preparing for, again, virtual Sabbath day of on the first Sunday of communion. <clears throat> if we've missed you the last time, please give us a call and we'll be able to share communion and give it to you through the offices and, and, uh, and on the first Sunday, how good God is. Let us stand in our homes for the benediction. Benediction is a, uh, a prayer. I thank God for the service. Hear your prayers, your gifts. 
and bless you. Some say till we meet again, but it's a prayer that God will continue to guide. We bow in reverence. And now to him who is able to keep us from falling, to present us faultless before his throne with exceeding joy. The only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Let every heart say, Amen. Amen. Oh, oh, amen. We thank you today. Be blessed. Until we share again. Amen. 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 Greetings. Good day. Good day. Greetings. They're checking where we're going to go. Baby, know how to turn it on. <laughs> 